So here we have an example of a three-dimensional rigid body problem. And as you could see, this bent pipe is being uh, held or supported by bearings at A, B, and C. Because these bearings are properly aligned, they are not going to have any moment reactions. Moment reactions are equal to zero. So our, the, the objective is to figure out the reactions developed at A, B, and C, and these would be just force reactions. So let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram. I'm going to just draw the free body diagram on the given figure here. So at A, as you could see, A can only move along the, uh, the y-axis. So there would be a reaction in the x. I'm going to call it AX. And there would be a reaction in the z direction, AZ. And we don't know if these are the right direction. We'll find out in a minute. At B, similarly, B is the same bearing, similar bearing. So we're going to have BX. And BZ again, note that B can, is free to move or it's loose and it can move along the y axis. But at C, you could see uh, that actually it's only free in the z direction, so there would be a reaction in the x and there would be a reaction in the y, Cx and Cy. Note that there are six unknowns here two at A, two at B, and two at C which means we have six equations, three moment equations, uh, moment about each axis, x, y, z, and three force equations, and they have to be equal to zero. So let me start with a very obvious equation. If we sum forces in the y direction, let's start with this equation. Notice that we have um, cy, and then the external force is 400, so therefore, Cy must be equal to negative 400. So the direction of Cy has to change. Unlike two-dimensional problems, we're not going to change the direction here. We just say Cy is equal to negative. Units, by the way, is Newtons. Okay, the next equation I'm going to use, uh, see if I use my force equations, that's not going to do anything for me, like forces, some of the forces in X or Z. So therefore, I go to my moment equation. One of the moment equations that I can uh, use is sum of the moment about y-axis equal to zero. And by the way, the way we figure out positive or negative, and by the way, my y-axis is going to be exactly the y-axis that you see here. So this is the y-axis, positive y-axis. You could actually move your axis to the point that you want. Here, I'm not going to move the y-axis. I'm just going to keep it the way, the way it is. Okay, so positive and negative is determined based on the right-hand rule. Here, forces that are parallel to y-axis or they're right on the y-axis like AX, AZ, BX, BZ, CY, 400, don't have any moment. So that leaves CX and 600. The moment of the CX about uh, y-axis is going to be CX times 0.4, and that's going to be a negative rotation based on the right-hand rule. Similarly, the 600 is, is going to be multiplied by 0.6, and that's going to be also a negative. So from here, we calculate for Cx, and Cx becomes minus 900. So we already figured two of the reactions. So now I have to go to the next region. I'm going to go back and forth. Um, so now I'm going to actually use... The moment equation, another moment equation, this time about x-axis, and again, remember, the right-hand rule is used. Let's go back and see. Now, anything that is sitting on the x-axis, which means ax and az, they don't have any moment. Any forces that is parallel to x-axis, like bx and cx, don't have any moment. Uh, and any force, like 400, that actually passes through x-axis, you see this 400? passing through the x-axis, so it doesn't have any moment. So that leaves only B sub Z and basically C sub Y and the 600. So let's take a look. So we start with B sub Z. So the moment of B sub Z about uh, x-axis is B sub Z times 0.6. And then the moment of the 600, 600 times 1.2, positive. These are based on the right-hand rule. And finally, the moment of uh, C sub Y that we just calculated right here, 
the C sub Y right here has moment about X axis and that's going to go actually positive so that would be uh, C sub Y times 0.4 but remember we already calculated C sub Y to be negative 400 so if I put that negative 400 I can go ahead and solve for B sub Z here so B sub Z happens to be negative 933 roughly newtons okay we're almost there uh, I'm gonna now use my last moment equation sum of the moment about z equals zero based on right hand root root so based on what you've already seen that moment is going to be minus bx times 0 0.6 minus 900 the 900 is the one that we calculated earlier that was the c sub x uh, minus 900 times 1.2 and then finally minus 400 times 0.6 So if we go ahead and solve for B sub X, B sub X happens to be equal to 1400 Newtons. And then the rest of the uh, reactions can be determined easily. The only thing we haven't, the only two equations that we haven't used are some of the forces in X equals zero. So here we have uh, 1400 and minus 900. And of course, a sub x, which is the, uh, the unknown. So a sub x from here becomes negative 500. And then finally, the last equation is sum of the forces in z equals 0. So we have az, bz, and uh, the force to 600, right? So az plus bz, remember bz is 933. And the 600 there is going in the positive direction. Therefore, A sub Z is about 333 newtons.